afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Lisa Nelson, VP of Membership and Business Event Strategies for AEC. Our webinar today is ET, Leading Technologies for 50 Plus Years. And our presenter is the esteemed Craig Werner, Chairman of the ET Seminar Committee. Um, he also is CEO of Werner Extrusion Solutions. All your computer audio and telephone lines are muted. If you have any questions during the webinar, please select Q&A from your toolbar and type your question in the dialog box. Craig should be able to address your questions at the end of his presentation. But if we do run out of time, you'll see his contact information on the last slide, or you can email directly and I'll see that he gets your inquiry. I'd like to tell you about Craig. In June of 2020, he retired from Kaiser Aluminum as Vice President of Extrusion Technology and is again providing consulting uh, support with Werner Extrusion Solutions to aluminum extruders to help them optimize their processes. While he was at Kaiser, Craig provided operational management and mentoring to Kaiser's soft alloy plants. He provided key decision support for extrusion investment and operational optimization, and led the extrusion tooling finite element modeling team. Craig is extremely active with the Aluminum Extruders Council, and he is past chairman of AEC. He currently chairs AEC's ET Seminar Committee and the Business Excellence Steering Committee. Uh, he quite frequently does webinars for us and presents at live conferences, so we keep Craig very busy. His education includes a bachelor's degree in industrial and manufacturing systems engineering from Pennsylvania State University and a master's in industrial administration from Carnegie Mellon University. His extensive manufacturing background includes optimization work on aluminum smelting and scrap collection, transportation, reprocessing into can stock with Alcoa and manufacturing systems designed for Timken Company. For the next 25 years, he worked with Werner Company, the world's leading manufacturer of climbing equipment, ladders, and a commercial aluminum extruder with exceptional technical capabilities. Craig installed and managed Werner's state-of-the-art extrusion operation in Chicago and led Werner's manufacturing efforts in Chicago, Illinois, Anniston, Alabama, and Merced, California. These facilities had extensive aluminum ex extrusion fiberglass protrusion, fabrication, ladder assembly, shipping and warehouse operations. From 2007 to 2014, Craig consulted for the aluminum extrusion industry and provided decision support to aluminum extruders, helping them to optimize their processes. And now I am very pleased and honored to turn the webinar over to Craig. Thank you, Lisa. Um, we have some work cutting down that bio. Um, let's say you need to mute yourself as soon as you feedback. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, ETs, and uh, we're going to talk about it with the frame of reference of uh, the earliest ET, 1969. Um, this is me. This is the working from home edition of me, and. Uh, you know, up on the top of the screen, you can see ET 20, 50 years, but as we know, um, we had to reschedule that due to COVID to ET 2021. And uh, in fact, that has been uh, moved now to ET 2022, which will be occurring May 3rd through 5th of 2022 in Orlando. Uh, all's going well with that. We're sorry for the interruption that the world has had, but so be it. <laughs> um, 2020 and 2021 have been difficult times. Uh, as we all know, it's been a devastating effect on many people, illnesses and deaths, economic realities have been a problem, travel, relationships, all, all kinds of things. Um, we had to alter our plan several times. ET20, as I said, is no longer 2021, but it's now 2022. And uh, this is a highly anticipated worldwide event. Uh, I've been to every ET since 1984, when I first joined the industry. I can't wait for this one, just as I can't wait for any of the ETs. Um, so 
looking forward to seeing many of you in in, uh, in person there. I want to talk a little bit about how to prepare yourself for ET 2022 and really for every ET. Um, first of all, of course, you have to budget appropriate personnel for attendance and make sure that you've got the budget set up for it. Reserve your travel and hotels. Uh, hotel reservations aren't going to open until June of this year. And uh, register for early and team attendance so you can take uh, most of, make most effective use of ET and also save the most money. And that'll be opening soon, registration for that. The other thing you can do is prepare yourselves individually and as a company before ET to take full advantage. So my talk today is a, is a historical look at ET. Our industry has been around a long time and we've grown and prospered from 1957 to the current day, from ET 1957. We're gonna talk a little bit about that because this paper is about 1969. But each of these ETs builds on the works of the prior ETs. And what I'd encourage all of you to do is research and learn from all of the past ETs to best prepare yourself with a good foundation so that you can learn as much as possible and have the perspective on the past that will help you understand the current for ET 2022. ETs are important to our world because they're critical events and venues that allow us to disseminate knowledge and to advance our industry versus alternative materials. And uh, aluminum is used throughout this world very extensively. My paper, uh, which is also going to be presented at ET, is uh, really a meta presentation. It's a presentation about presentations, about the prior research that was done. So uh, with that, let's get started on it. There were 11 prior ETs, formal ones, from 1969 till 2016, over 1,500 technical papers. And I took some pictures from 1969 through the years, adding all my new ET books, to my pile saying, these are the ETs that have come and gone and the next ones that are coming. And this is all the ETs from 1969 to uh, ET uh, 2012. The latest one was ET 16. I, I chose to put it off to the side so you could see what the cover of one of these books looks like. This, this uh, quick pictures of these books building this is a lot of work. This is the work that teams of people working together for over 50 years have done to help develop our industry. And we need to thank all of those past pioneers. ETs are a chance for us to get together, network, share, and benchmark, and to learn about the newest things in our materials, our alloy process improvements, new equipment, industrial knowledge, how to optimize things, uh, how to how to uh, do post extrusion work. There's a lot of information in ETs. It also helps besides ourselves and our, our uh, extruders, it helps our customers, engineers, architects, designers, and others who come to ET to learn. And we see more and more of this with the automotive industry starting to come to the ETs to learn more. So e extrusion is a powerful uh, process that gives us unique design alternatives to offer to the world. And ET helps us to share that with the world. So a little bit of fun fact about ET. It didn't used to be called ET. Like the ET69 and ET77 were actually just called the International Aluminum Extrusion Technology Seminar. Uh, my Uncle Bob, who's one of my mentors uh, from Warner Company, he took over as ET84 chair, and he was friends with George Levy of National Aluminum. Uh, George was a great marketing guy. He had an idea. I don't remember the exact words, but as Bob described it to me, George said, why don't we ride the coattails of Steven Spielberg? We got this ET, this movie about this cute extraterrestrial, that could be extrusion technology. So that was how all this was born. From then on, we used ET84, ET88, ET2022, and also implored our children to phone home. All of us are excited to be at ET for the networking, equipment, process ideas, optimization, and other things that we'll learn. So why are we looking backwards? Why is it worth looking at it? paper from 1969. What could we possibly learn from that? The world has moved on. That's ancient history. But it really is. In 69, there were 30 papers. Here's what the book looks like. And uh, that's some table of contents in front of it. This is what the cover looked like. And uh, these folks pulled together a conference talking about the international extrusion technology. Why is it important? Well, the fact is, 
the extrusion process and the extrusion material doesn't care what year we were in. It just cares about the physical realities that it takes to choose the right alloy, process the right extrusions through equipment, have the right equipment, et cetera. A lot of what they talked about in 69 is actually very valid today. I'm just gonna show you a little bit of this. I'm not gonna recount everything that happened in 30 papers. But the idea here is to prepare us, all of us, to think about how we can benefit even more from ETs, not just from attending the most current one, but often looking backwards, which I do all the time. I look back at the prior ETs and research information that I need for my professional career. So this is uh, Bob Warner, Chairman Emeritus. And uh, you might notice that there's two pictures of them. They're twins, mirror twins. Dick Warner is uh, in the upper left and Bob Warner is in the lower right. This is all circa 1950, pre-ET, before the first ET. And uh, Bob had a good quote after he saw my first paper draft of my ET-22 paper. He said, in actuality, science and technology is built upon what came before, even though it may not be as well understood as one would like. We learn from our successes, but much more importantly, from our mistakes. Uh, Werner had a Canadian operation which uh, Bob ran. So he said, Werner Canada Limited learned in the beginning that extrusion dyes have been designed by one experienced in magnesium extrusion and not aluminum extrusion make great boat anchors. So you really have to understand the material you're working with to fine tune the equipment and the tooling and everything else that goes into the process. So let's talk about ET69. These are the papers I'm going to talk you through. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just took a smattering of information from some of the papers. So these are the eight papers I'm going to go through. And uh, let's go through those right now. Each one will be a page or two. First one is from uh, Robert Ferguson of, of Alcoa. And uh, he wrote a paper on evaluating extrusion plant operations. And I think that Alcoa's intent in writing this paper in 57 was to help the fledgling industry to grow and prosper because by doing so, they'd, they'd have to buy more aluminum billet. It's actually a must read for basic knowledge in the history of the aluminum extrusion process. So there's a lot of information about equipment and staffing and cost trade-offs. It's kind of a primer to understand what are some of the things important to the extrusion process. Second paper is from uh, uh, Baldwin Lima Hamilton, and that's a BLH a press manufacturer. Much of the things they talk about is still very applicable in 2020. The presses are quite different, although we had an old BLH press at uh, Werner, and I know that some of the uh, things that we had on that press are still in use today. There have been a lot of advancement, but this is worth reading. And particularly what struck me about this paper, answering the question, why do we care about 1969? So this is covering unit pressure and some different materials and platen designs and other things, all important, container alignment, wear adjustment. but particularly this part on the left intrigued me. He spends a little bit of time talking about the trade-offs of using uh, profiles on undersized presses. Having a press that doesn't have quite enough tonnage for the circle size for the billet diameter that you're using, so the, the unit pressure is too low, and therefore it's hard to do both harder materials but also more intricate shapes, which causes people to have to run quite hot billets and hot tooling, which makes, it, makes the extrusion process much slower. That's something that's still true today. And when you're working on optimizing your operations, you want to make sure that you're putting things on the right press with the right unit pressure. This was a paper I found interesting about casting. They also covered that. I'm not going to go through a lot of details, but it basically lays the groundwork about how aluminum ingots out and scrap are made from the casting process and talks a lot about the importance of furnace circulation and the, the um, temperature uniformity throughout. So for those of you in the casting realm, it's worth taking a look at this paper. Um, Mr. Beatty from Kaiser, where, where I just retired, he has a tremendous paper about the properties of microstructure of uh, 6063 alloys. And it, it's what we're creating in the alloy and in the extrusion really makes a difference in how the part can be formed. So he's talking about this, and to me, this is a must read for every metallurgist. A lot of ET papers seem like they could have been built off of this. He has a lot of uh, photomicrographs and uh, graphical results explaining things. He covers the different metallurgical phases, talks about what can go wrong and how to avoid them, key requirements for success. So for, for me, 
This is a must read paper. And really, I mean, if you, if you get, if you only purchase one or two papers from 1969 or look through them, if you have the original book from that, this is one that you want to look at. I'll give you another one in a few minutes. Um, the next paper is from Mr. Ashton from Reynolds Metals Company about the metallurgy of pressed heat treatable uh, 7000 series alloys. And uh, he touches on the alloys noted in the upper right. And he talks a bit about uh, press solution heat treating and how these alloys are all insensitive to quench rate, which is a big advantage for things uh, where you might have distortion due to over quenching. And he also talks about the weldability and the improved extrudability versus the 5000 series alloy. So for those looking at uh, 7000 series alloys, this is a good foundational paper to read about. This is the other paper that I think is really important to read. It's a design of the extrusion dies and tools from Clark Stocktail, but it goes into so much more than that. He was with Alcoa and he actually, uh, he, he helped Warner Company develop our die design philosophies, our strategies and tactics, our equipment philosophies over the years. He was a consultant to us before I joined. He talks a lot about doing things right the first time and critical how important recovery is to a company's success, financial success, why, why you should focus on value, not acquisition costs, the trade-offs between time and re, uh, recovery. And really the right column gives you how you view the extrusion holistically how all the different parts have to come together to optimize an extrusion operation. So again, critical paper that I think folks should read and covers some really critical information. So uh, this is one that I would, uh, I would go out of your way to contact the AEC or the Loan Association where this paper is housed and get hold of it. Next paper is about extrusion tooling from Mr. Huffman from Latrobe. And in this, he teaches the fundamentals of tool steel materials. And there's a lot of information that for those people buying tools or specifying different types of materials, even though we may not have all the most modern tools in here, the basic tools that we use are the basic tool materials we use, age 11, 12, and 13 certainly are covered in here. And he talks about what extrusion dies do, helping us to achieve, achieve near net shape or actually final net shape. The, high temperatures that the tooling is, is uh, subject to, and all the other things about what you can do to make a tool work better and last longer through nitriding, et cetera. So a good tool for those interested in the tooling realm. Another great paper from uh, Alcoa, from Carl Lynch, was about the metallurgical aspects of press heat treatment. Later on, I'm gonna talk about uh, a conference from 1957, and a lot of this stuff wasn't fully understood uh, back then, and I'll talk about that. Um, so this, this paper gives kind of the foundational issues for 6,000 series metallurgy, talks about, you know, the different stresses and the strength dimensional control and productivity, the things that we really have to focus on in the extrusion process. It talk, talks about how strength is built and why some of the components of the alloying ingredients help to, to lock in the way that these interatomic slip planes can move and makes the material harder and stiffer talks about heat treatment, talks about the fundamental things that really haven't changed. For the 6,000 series alloys, we first have to put the mag silicide into solution, and there are other components besides mag silicide. I know that it's not just MG2SI. Uh, so for those of you listening, there are more modern things we know, but still thinking about some of the mag silicide, getting it, the it and other alloy ingredients into solution, retaining it in solution through quenching it quickly enough, and then using aging to have a controlled release of the mag psilocyte uh, helps us to understand how to achieve proper material properties through press solution heat treatment and the other process parameters you need to worry about in extrusion. There's a lot of other ET papers that I'm not going to take the time to take you through. Uh, those are only eight of the 30 papers, but uh, I do want to talk to you about these 1500 papers and you know again, why are we focusing on ET 2022? We have all of these papers that were done. Some of them are co-owned by the Aluminum Association and the Aluminum Extruders Council. All the papers after ET 2000 um, were currently available from the AEC because those conferences were put on by the AEC alone. And there is some inventory uh, that they hold of earlier papers available as well. 
So if you've attended past DTs or if anybody in your company has, you, you have either the books, the CDs, the memory sticks, you have things available to, to find this material. Certainly the memory sticks make it a little more searchable, although they're not easily searchable. We're working on that at the council, the uh, Loan Extruders Council to help make it even more accessible. You also see I have a light metals age uh, um, memory stick up here. And this is because they also have some valuable information, which I reference from time to time. And that you can purchase by just contacting Light Metal Age. So uh, we at the AC are going to work hard to create a searchable index of uh, past ET papers. But uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to look through these things. And the reason is the papers I talked to you about today, those red ones, the eight papers, or maybe that's 30, I'm not sure how big that red slice is. But those are the papers I've talked about. The ET22 papers are the yellow uh, slice of the pie. All these other papers that are available, all this content is available. And my question to you is, forget about 69 even, but okay, you wanna go to ET2022, but prepare yourself by looking through some of the stuff from ET1969 through ET16. Um, ET, uh, that information is valuable and will help you to know what types of things you're looking for at ET22, how you should make best use of the money that your company or yourself are spending to attend. You know, how do you, what should you be looking for? What should you learn? So back to harvesting the past GTs, if you go on the AEC site, they have information uh, about uh, what you might look at and you can look through the different uh, proceedings from 2004 through 2016. You can uh, click and view through here and you can uh, download, you can either find your proceedings if you have them in the past, if you're looking for a particular paper, or you can download them from the AEC for a price. So another fun fact about ETs, any of you recall ET57? ET57 wasn't actually ET. It was a meeting organized by Maurice Roberts. Some of you that attend uh, ETs will recognize the name as the Maurice Roberts Award, the Award of Excellence for uh, Extrusion Technology and Sharing Data and Sharing Information, et cetera. This uh, took place in uh, December 12, 1957 in Detroit. Uh, there were some written notes from this that you know it was really just somebody took notes and wrote this out there weren't pre-developed papers it was just a, a conference to talk about this fledgling industry the aluminum extrusion industry and i want to give a special thanks to greg lee because greg found these notes found a, a, a staple together copy of all these notes scanned them for me and sent them to me and uh it's interesting how much they how they were searching for information and uh, it was really the predecessor to our first ET. So there were things in there, like I'll read the bottom part. John and I have worked to a great extent with our own press people in trying to educate them and bring to them the information we feel is important in terms of quality control and inspection. In doing this work, we developed about three or four papers which we passed around in our plant. And Leonard, in one of his visits to LA, felt uh, we might use this as the basis of a seminar. This explains to some extent the disorganized appearance of these three papers. They don't particularly illuminate one item of the subject, but generally cover the whole field. So this was somebody, this was Chairman Bao saying, you know, we, we looked at ourselves and we used some stuff we pulled together, but the industry really needs to pull this information together. There was a lot of talk, and if you read through these papers, you'll see, I mean, some of it's funny. They don't know what the effect is. They're guessing, they're trying, they're even arguing sometimes about whether homogenization is important, or whether something else is important. So, uh, but there's some good information. So this builds on the next ET. Chairman Bao and part of his thing said the answer would have to come after some experimentation. And that idea of using experimentation to develop the next content for future ETs is, has come back and been used ever since. And Maurice Roberts in his closing, uh, right after he said, we will stand adjourned, Maurice, who was the, you know, the brought everybody together, said, we hope these sessions can be continued. And they did. So the, you know, the key takeaways from 57 are that people were striving to understand the material, the processes, the equipment, and the mindset. How do we, how do we succeed in this industry? They posed a lot of interesting questions and postulated some next steps. But it took Maurice and his team uh, another 12 years. Maurice was the chairman of ET69. And that team worked together 
to come up with ET69, which then set the tone and direction for all the ETs that followed after that. So it's really a tremendous thing. ETs drive and disseminate the improvements in our industry. Every ET is a unique opportunity to learn from, and, and each helps to build for the next. All of us can learn a lot from researching prior ETs. Um, not so much from 57, but from 69 and beyond. So I would encourage you, everybody who's listening to this webinar, either live or maybe pre-recorded afterwards, take full advantage of what's available to you. Leverage the investment you're going to spend at ET by learning from the past. Look at the information. Contact the AEC for papers. Look, go to your company. People probably have old copies, hard copies of the books and memory sticks and CD drives. Realize it's important. All these ET pioneers, they were so important to building the platform that we've all uh, used to build our own companies on. So your company spent a lot of money to send you to ET22. Build on the work of the, to the ET22 authors, but also all those people who came before for the foundation for our future progress. So that's really my ET paper. As I said, it's, an, it's a meta paper. I didn't, you know, I didn't create something new here, but this was an opportunity for me to talk to you about 1969, and, but not just that, all of the other ETs as well. I'm going to give my final picture of me here is holding a beer can that I used for uh, for uh, some education I just did with the Rochester Institute of Technology a couple of weeks ago, showing them that beer can holder. But it's a call out to Chris Yao, one of the wonderful people in the extrusion industry. And his concluding sentence was the best I'd ever heard in any ET presentation. It was a paper called Upset, and it was about the upsetting of the billet inside the container, how to measure it and how to interpret what's happening. And when he got all done and to a thundering applause, he said, I think I'll go and upset a beer following this. So uh, I didn't attend all of those old, old papers, certainly 57, 69, 77, but I have been to every one since uh, 1984. And I plan to be attending every one that there is to follow as well. So with that, I would like to open the floor to any questions. Liz, I don't know if we've had any typed in. I, ap I appreciate everybody paying attention. And I really encourage you to take advantage of, of ET and what's yet to come. Thank you, Craig. That was terrific. Um, you probably weren't even born in uh, 57, were you? <laughs> I was born in 57. <laughs> so it was close. I might have been imagined. <laughs> 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 Well, that was really a super presentation. Thank you so much. It helps I was conceived in 57. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, we don't, we don't have any questions so far, but we'll give it a few minutes to see if any come in. Uh, oh, we do have a question. Are the papers downloadable anywhere? Uh, yes. We have them available on the AEC website from 2004 on, and you can purchase PDFs, downloadable P PDFs of the past papers. So if you uh, go to the AEC website and look for our publications, you will be able to see those. Also, if you purchase three or more uh, products from the ET series, you get a 20% discount. So that can really add up. So we encourage everyone to go in and check that out. We do have hard copies, we've got books, we've got CDs, flash drives, and then also the downloadable PDF versions. I have a question. Let's hold on that question. Sure. I remember that there was, I think it was a compendium of past ETs that had been pulled together that maybe ET I don't know, 2008 or something, where you could buy it and have access to all the past ETs. Does the AC still offer that? Or is it only I think, online? I think you might be thinking of the ET anthology, which does cover a series of years. I think it's three or three or four of the older ETs are all compiled into the ET anthology. And we do still have some of those CDs available for purchase. Okay. So that'd be a way for somebody to get a lot of papers, even though they're not the most current ones necessarily. That is correct. That okay. is correct. Um, everybody, we did record 
for today's webinar. So um, we will be posting this uh, somewhere on the AEC and probably ET websites uh, quite soon. And we encourage you to share this with colleagues and, and go in and view it at your convenience, share it with your coworkers and uh, anybody else who is curious and interested about ET. Uh, reassure them that ET is going to happen. We are uh, gearing up again now and we are gung ho. We are so excited and looking forward to ET 22. Um, this last year went very fast. Uh, as Craig mentions, originally this was going to be ET 20, then we rescheduled it for this year. And that year went very quickly. And so this next year is also going to pass very quickly. Uh, we do have a question, number of papers for ET-22. Craig, we worked on this uh, quite some time back when we were laying out the grid. I think it's 130. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I think we had 130. I think we slated 122 of those for presentation. Those were all the slots we have. We, we made a, a change to uh, the current ET, and there's probably a webinar or something about this or some communications we put out through the AEC. But um, we changed the way that the ET uh things are, are are happening so we have the best of track and best of et papers and sometimes those would compete with other papers and it was tough tough on the other authors because if you're a best of track people want to go to those papers so those rooms would be super crowded and the other five rooms that might not have a best of track in it were not as crowded so we changed things around so that every attendee at et 2022 now has the ability to see the best of ET paper, which will be done in the general session. And then every day there will be two papers given, um, I think morning or afternoon, I can't remember, where those papers that are best of track, the different tracks, bill of technology, extrusion equipment, extrusion process, et cetera, the different six tracks, each of the best papers will be a standalone, not competing with any other paper. So everybody can listen to that paper and learn from those things that the um, the judges decided were the seven most important papers. So uh, that's something a little different this time. Um, the, the other comment I'll make is these folks that created the ET20 um, content, the, the authors, the universities, the companies that did the research, they really put a lot into this and they're chomping at the bit to have people talk about or learn from them about what they have to say. So these guys, I mean, I'm sure guys and, and girls, some of these folks um, will be um, maybe not able to attend, but we haven't really heard of much of that. We think there's gonna be a lot of excitement, not, not just from the attendees, but from the authors to be heard, because they did all this work with ET as the end game of what they were offering. So. Looking, really looking forward to it. I'm sorry we've gone through the last two years with some of the stuff we've had to go through, but uh, we'll come out of it stronger and we'll come out with a great ET for 2022. Absolutely. We do have another question, Craig. Which paper do you recommend we read to learn about heat and stress lines? I don't know. I'm not sure what, what the stress line comment means. Is it the the line, if you have a thin walled profile with another, like a T shape, where the upright of the T hits the top of the T, and sometimes you can see heat differences showing up on the surface. If that's what you're talking about, I don't know what papers there are, but there's certainly uh, AEC webinars for members only that cover that in the extrusion die design and process area. Um, I can't think of, I mean, there's, there's 1,500 plus papers. I don't know, know which one covers that. Um, but that could be something that, uh, Alyssa, maybe we can look into afterwards. I'd probably talk to some of the, you know, the true experts in the field that really have a good understanding of this. I mean, you and I can think of a couple of them that we could contact to see if they have an idea how to answer that question better. Okay, yeah, and he did clarify it's the T-joint. Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I assumed he was saying, but... Uh, um, Having said that, I don't know what paper to point to. There may be one, or there may be a webinar. I know that there's webinars at the uh, in the AEC webinar library that are available for members. Yes, yes. Um, and we do have another question. Um, 
can we have a list of papers for eat for 2022 is this also on the AEC website yes it is you can access the abstracts for each and every paper that we have in our coffers for uh 22 um the et 22 website um i believe it is accessible now i know we, they had to do some tweaking to um, make some changes the dates and so on and so forth um, if you don't find it readily please uh, contact craig or myself my email is l nelson at tso.net um, and i can help you find um, those abstracts we have another question other events around et22 yes we are if you recall the programming as we had it originally with in conjunction classes on monday um, that will be may 2nd and friday may 6th we do have activities we are leaving the program as close as possible as to the original planning so on Monday, May 2nd, we'll have the process analysis class from the uh, professors at the University of Bologna. Uh, we will have an extrusion excellence class with our esteemed friend, uh, Wojciech Misiolek, and also AAC, the Aluminum Anodizers Council, will be holding their um, essentials class. And then on Friday, May 6th, we will have a mini dye clinic. We'll also have our Founders Day golf tournament. Um, and we'll have a tour of uh, the Kennedy Space Center available. Uh, so lots of activities. We'll have a very special event on Thursday night. ET itself uh, with the presentations and general sessions will happen the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. So the evening of the 5th, which is Thursday, we will have a very special gala event. Um, these extra events, of course, are optional, but all of the details can be found uh, at the ET22 website, 2022 website. And uh, registration, we are in the process of getting that ready to reopen again. We hope to have that open and ready for registration uh, within the coming weeks. And the hotel, uh, it's the same hotel that we were going to be at this year. That's the Hilton Orlando, lovely venue and perfect for ET. Um, their uh, booking block will be open for ET in June. They can only have it open so many months prior to an event. So it is currently closed, but will open in June, probably the early uh, part of June. Okay, so far, no more questions. Um, the, today's webinar is recorded, as I mentioned, so you'll be able to view it later and share with colleagues. Uh, we will also be sending out an evaluation survey, and we ask that you uh, please participate in that. We really take your uh, input seriously, and uh, there's a question in there about other things that you might like to see or hear about. And we do take that into consideration when we plan and program future webinars and live events. On March 24th, we have Charlie Bird, Health and Safety Manager of Bonnell Aluminum, who will be presenting Into the Unknown, COVID-19 Crisis Management in the Workplace. So that should be very, very interesting. Uh, things seem to be on the upswing and uh, the world is hopefully improving and Charlie will will bring us some more insight there. Make sure you visit AECmeets.org frequently to view updates on uh, upcoming webinars and events and uh, registration details. We have lots of great webinars scheduled for this year. Uh, many of you have probably gotten the AEC calendar of events, which of course uh, has already uh, have lots of changes. Um, but if you have any questions about anything, uh, you can always reach out to me and I can uh, let you know uh, what we have on the horizon. We have our virtual annual meeting and leadership conference coming up in a couple of weeks. Registration is open for that. And we have a great program uh, ready for you. We've really enjoyed having you with us today. And Craig, this was a great uh, presentation. Thank you so much. 
like to thank everybody for being with us today. Uh, that looks like it's that's it, Craig. I don't think we have any more questions coming in right now. I, I have one, uh, one or two final things I'd like to say, though. Um, okay. First of all, besides thanking um, the the companies, the universities, the authors that do all these papers, I want to give a special thanks to the Aluminum Extrusion Extruders Council and also to the Aluminum Association for their earlier work on the ETs. And I want to thank the staff of the AEC. I've been working with this staff and, and Lissa very, very closely on ET. She wasn't here back in 84, but she's been a core of getting this process of creating the, gathering the content and getting the papers done. And she's done a tremendous amount of work behind the scenes, um, administering all the things to make ET successful. So I wanted to give a shout out to Lissa. Um, because without the support we have from staff and Lisa, particularly for this ET conference, um, it would be nearly impossible for uh, those of us who are more worried about the technical stuff to actually put on the conference. So, for Alyssa and a bunch of other staff people at, at AEC, thank you very much. Thank you, Craig, for your kind words. It's always been a pleasure. Um, I've uh, been at all of the ETs since 2000, so I'm a little, uh, little seasoned myself, um, but it's always been a great joy, and uh, yes, it, it is a lot of work, but when you get to ET and you see uh, everything come to fruition, it's, it's so rewarding and such a pleasure to be involved in, and it, is my, it has always been my honor. Thank you. Okay, well, I think that's it for today, and hopefully we will see you on March 24th. Thanks, everybody.